This is just a quick follow-up video to a video I posted a short time ago on a small Tesla coil kit. Uh, it's part of the cheap Chinese kit series that I've been posting. And uh, in that uh, video I replaced the original coil that came with the kit with a much larger one and uh, had some interesting comments. So thanks for everyone that commented on that video. I uh, just wanted to clarify a, a few points. The, the first one is that these videos are about the kit and the, the kit building experience. It's not about the final product, how well it works. I'm not doing a product review. It's just about whether the kit was fun to build. And in this case, um, because we can go forward with it and, and experiment and do various things, then uh, it opens the door to kind of future experimentation. And so it's quite a, a good way to get into something like this. One of the things in uh, that video is I showed the instructions and said they were in Chinese and someone said that you can translate Chinese uh, instructions using Google, which you can. Um, I didn't do that in the video, that's not what the video was about, it was about the kit building. Um, but you can do that if you want to, if you have uh, instructions uh, you can translate them. In the video when I built this kit originally I got very poor output from it and then that turned out to be uh, the capacitor, the tuning capacitor or timing capacitor that came with the kit was actually faulty. It was about 1 20th of the value it should have been and so the uh, the whole system was oscillating way too fast. Uh, I slowed that down and although I didn't show it in the video I was getting some output not very good and um, no amount of, of tinkering would have got a particularly good output. Uh, I did try various uh, turns on the primary. Someone suggested that it perhaps wasn't oscillating. Well, we know it was oscillating because it did light the bulb up. Um, that's the neon bulb, not the LED. So we know it was oscillating. Uh, it just wasn't oscillating at the right frequency. And uh, also I did try various turn uh, count on the primary. I tried everything from 1 up to 4 and it didn't really make any difference until I changed the capacitor then I did get reasonable output and also the audio would work. I could uh, create sound using the modulation input. Um, but really what I wanted to do in this video was address another comment that someone made that I think uh, he may have completely missed the point of Tesla coils and these are for entertainment fun, curiosity, experimentation. And uh, he's said that um, adding more turns doesn't give you a higher voltage. Now that's kind of correct, but I did leave a very good hint towards that in the video, which I'll go a, a bit further into in this video. I intend to come back in the future and post a video on how to drive a call like this properly, so I won't go into too much detail, but I will give a much stronger clue. Um, also, I point out that a lot of people have said um, I'm spelling Chinese wrong when I'm uh, posting the videos. Yes, I'm aware that's not how you spell Chinese, but the first video I posted in this series was removed by YouTube because of the title. And so I changed the spelling in the title so that the videos won't be removed by the YouTube algorithm. So thanks for anyone that pointed that out, but uh, I'm aware of it and it is done for a reason. It's also slightly a play on words because uh, not all the kits I'm building actually come from China. It should also be noted in the videos that uh, kit um, isn't spelt with a C. And uh, again, that's uh, for a bit of fun. Uh, one other point with this is I'm driving this coil from one end. Uh, whereas the original is driven from the center. It is, as the commenter pointed out, this is about coupling. It's not really about just the number of turns. And if you look at these coils, they are uh, overwound in the center. So this is wound slightly differently. It's also not a very good driver, single-ended. It's not really very efficient. Uh, but even so, I think um, the other part of the point that was missed is while adding more turns does not increase the voltage necessarily, it does allow you to put much more energy into the coil and that gives you far more scope for experimentation. 
So we'll turn the lights off and I'll turn the power on. This might make some noise on the microphone by the way so be prepared for that. So as we can see we're getting quite a nice uh, discharge. We can draw some fairly nice arcs. And of course we can light up the tube. In fact we can light up more than one tube. And of course we can light up the original neon, but now we can do it at much greater range. Again, notice how the neon dims, it gets dimmer and brighter as we move it. And this is the clue that I gave in the first video, which I'll just clarify uh, right now. If I bring one of these tubes close to the coil and I start moving it up and down, what you'll see is a dark band that is not created by uh, an artifact of the tube. This is created by the coil itself and if we go further up there's another one up here one down here if we go further down there's another one lower down and I don't know how clearly it's coming out on the camera but you'll see those bands are in specific locations on the coil and they are created by a particular feature of the coil and we'll come back to that when we try to optimize the driver for this um, but as I say, you can have a lot of uh, fun experimenting with these and uh, they can be uh, quite spectacular. If you make very large scale ones, then they are interesting to play with. And that is kind of the point of making them bigger. It's not to just uh, try and raise the voltage, it's to raise the energy in them and to make them more of a spectacle. Uh, in other words, they're to have fun with. Technically, this is not a good way to generate high voltage, but they are fun to play with. So my advice to anyone that wants to have a go at building a Tesla coil like this, or experiment with adding more turns, is to disregard anyone that says it's not a good way to do it. Go ahead and do it, have fun, trying to kill yourself, uh, but the main thing is disregard anyone that says um, technically it's a bad thing to do remember that this is for fun. Okay now one of the comments I got was that if this is exposed and it's not in a container of any sort, there's no insulation around it, then surely we'll get uh, discharge all the way up and down the coil and that's absolutely correct. If I'll turn the lights back off, turn the power back on and what we'll see now is that we can draw an arc how clear this is coming off my camera in various places on the coil. Again notice how it only does it in certain locations and again that's part of the clue as to how to drive these to higher voltages. So yes um, the coil being exposed doesn't mean that you'll get a discharge anywhere there is a, a, a path for the uh, current to flow. Okay so um, Hopefully that's addressed any uh, comments or queries for what we're looking at here. But again, remember, I'm doing this purely for fun. It's not meant to be a technical challenge as to how to generate the highest possible voltage. This is just for a bit of uh, entertainment.